name's Grandad. Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's vlog. Um, thanks for liking, subscribing and leaving all the comments. We really do appreciate it. I've had a few questions recently about our engine. So I thought we'd just take a few minutes just to bring you in on what's happening with it. Originally, when we first had the boat built, we were going to have a Beta 43, um, which is, as people know, pretty standard sort of canal boat engine. Um, and it suits the size of boat we've got. So happy day. So we had everything fabricated for that. And then we didn't want the engine put in straight away because we wanted to leave it as long as we could until it's close to the time we're going to get in the water, which is sort of soon. <laughs> fingers Dependent. crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. But anyway, so we went and put the order in sort of uh, late September, October. And then, unfortunately, um, the boat builder across the way that built the boat came back and said they can't get the engine till at least July at the, at the very earliest um, and that was purely and simply because Beta was struggling to get the engine blocks over to marinise them I don't know whether that's for all across the Beta range but it's definitely for the 43 which we were going to have so so we had to have a rethink so it was a choice between a, a Barra Shire and the canal line now uh, our skin tank is here and talking to the boat builders across the way this skin tank is suited for the same side as a canal line so there's if you had the barrow shire the skin tank was on the opposite, opposite side so we decided along the canal line 42 so um, we put that order in which would be well it was around about October, October. so we thought we'd have it in round about January. Yeah, we thought January, February time because it said about 10, 12 weeks. Obviously now we're into April time, so and it still hasn't arrived. So uh, today I went over to see Pete at the bow yard. Um, it's not his fault, it's just one of those things. It's, it's, it's universal, it's global, everybody's struggling to get material. So um, the latest we've got on the engine is that it's actually being manufactured at the moment um, so we're just waiting on a phone call now for when the, the, the actual engine will be delivered across to the way to the bow yard and then it's just a case then of when Pete can arrange with us to get it fitted in I mean we're easy we can come and do it any time for us there's no there's no big problem with that because we're here mostly all the time so um, so yeah we've gone for canal line 42 um, we're going to have a travel pack fitted on it as well for uh, so yep, what, it's got, the wind has got up the wind's got might up, be sorry. a bit of windy on there yeah sorry if it's a bit wind and noise on there but anyway but yeah so we're going to go for the canal line 42 so with the travel pack on it uh, which gives us 240 volt power when we're traveling so the washing machine anything 240 is run fine we're also going to have the inverter but we're going to go into that obviously in a different vlog when we start doing the electrics in more in depth. Um, we've got the stern tube already fitted, which is a bonus. So all that's left for Pete to order now is the, got the prop shaft, which has been ordered, the propeller, um, the and grease the stern gun, yeah, greaser, stern which gun. will be mounted. It's on that, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. So yeah, so unfortunately, well, all this paint work that we've done all well, these bits will have to be redone, but that's no big problem. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a blue engine, which we thought we'd have a green engine, so. Anyway. I wanted green and red in there, so now we've got a blue one. Blue and red. I think it'll have to stay yeah. red. I think it'll have to stay this colour now, yeah. So, yeah, that's where we are with it. So, uh, for anybody that was asking, there's the answer. So, uh, stick with us, and uh, hopefully soon. We'll be seeing the vlog when the, the engine's actually fitted. I'm not fitting it, we're going to get um, the professionals in. <laughs> the professionals. The professionals in from the boat yard to do it because it's, yeah, 
And we're hoping that they'll let us film while they're doing it. I'm but. sure they will, because they'll let us film the rest, don't they? So, yeah. yeah. So in this week's vlog, we're carrying on in the kitchen, under the kitchen sink, and Ailey sent me some, sent me some more weird and wonderful things. Um, you'll, you'll understand where I'm coming from, if you've watched the vlog for long enough. Um, but yeah, there's a load of pull-outs and drawers and stuff that's going under the sink, just to maximise the space under there. But anyway, we'll uh, crack on with it and hope you enjoy this week's vlog and uh, see what you think. Take care. So then that can go in. You know my motto, measure 300 times and fit once. this because that can be taken out if we need to need to take it out the bins runner are going side in here. Yeah. yeah wish they'll see that in a bit anyway and then this side will be for the laundry basket and that side will be for all the stuff you have in the kitchen like cleaning products and stuff Tell me what you want. Drill. What you really, really want. Yeah, really want zig a zig. <laughs> oh, I need the screws for this as well. So this is why we've done this uh, section inside the main under sink cupboard. Um, it's instead of having full height dividers in the in the cupboard, we want three separate doors uh, on the front of this under sink cupboard. So this was the easiest way to do it. We needed the runners to be able to go on for the drawers um, and the pull outs. Um, uh, but we still needed to leave space for the sink and all the pipe work under there. Right, on with the next contraption she wants me to make. Just the old tie bond. Yep. So this is the laundry basket frame. Yeah. I'm going to make a fabric insert, so we just want to make the frame strong enough for the door to attach onto.
glue along as well, did some glue. Uh, probably glue would be good as well. It's just not worth so I missed them screws so I could come inside that. Yeah. just putting these smaller bits along the back of the pull out um, really just to hold the um, piece together They're a little bit leggy without without any strengthening bars across um, but at the front the door will sit to the full height stuck on that front bit once the laundry bin was done uh, we also done a pull out for all the cleaning products when that was finished we handed it to the grandkids for them to paint. My Millie's hair. Two it go all over Millie's hair. For Mill oh look, you got Millie's hair, look. Oh yeah. Now I'm going to do this bit. Yep. You never eat Lello snow. Anyway, moving on. Time to just uh, run up a quick laundry bag to go inside the uh, wooden unit. There is going to be some little studs on this, but I want to wash the bag first just made a calico and I'd like to just take the dressing out of it and uh, shrink it a little bit before it goes into into the box Once the sink is all put in, we'll be able to see actually how low all the pipe work comes and 
I'll be adding rails and uh, I'll add a box like this to it just to hold things like uh, the washing up liquid and dishcloths and all the different cleaning fluids. doesn't look very big but when we filled the bag up with uh, a load of clothes it was got loaded didn't it? Yeah, surprising more than what you can get in it. Again, once the sink is in and we can see actually how low all our pipe work is going to be, um, I'd like to add a section where we can store all our things like our uh, fold down buckets and uh, trays and cutting board and things like that. So but we'll just have to wait till these sinks are in. So we've got two sinks, two round ones. Well, one sink and one draining board that sort of sits about an inch into the worktop. And because everything is sitting in a tray, um, it all comes out easy to be cleaned instead of having to get inside the cupboard and try and clean round the back. We've done this drawer in 18 mil thick ply and the base. Um, because it's going to carry the door which is going to be a big door up to the top we wanted it to be sort of like the strongest cupboard that we did really yes um because it's going to be carrying the biggest cupboard front the drawer front yeah cupboard front they'd yeah. be good classes cupboard fronts wouldn't they I think are, yeah. yeah so that's why we've done it like that and that's why it looks like a bit like a sledge it wasn't worth doing it a whole box that thick and that high we just needed to have the front high and these are our trays that i want to be able to perhaps sit on that above that sledge above that, that of that shelf yeah and um we can store all them on the shelf above them yeah. hopefully what I've been doing I've uh, the leftover pieces of wood the AD cut out of the wood for the fruit baskets and then the inserts of this I've been making some shelves Put some brackets on. Don't put your cup on that one. <laughs> no, I've cut that one out for a, for a plant to go in, so um, the little plant pot don't slide off the shelf when we're moving. You'll see. Right, let's get these up. Get the other bracket on that, and then. that were supplied with the brackets um, were the same colour as the brackets but they were really soft as soon as you started screwing into them they really 
churned up the head the head so um, we've used our own screws and we're going to put some a bit of bronze or black um, paint over the top of them just to disguise the colour Time to treat Millie and Reggie for helping us out with the painting and so we took them on a steam train for the day. Oh, no. 
Right, ready? Okay. One, two, three, three. Cheese. 